Let's get right into it. Number 14. The Facebook Emotional Contagion Study In 2012, Facebook decided to play God with your mood without telling you. They tweaked the algorithms of nearly 700,000 users, showing some people only positive posts and others only negative ones. They found that if your feed is a dumpster fire, you'll start posting dumpster fire content, too. The study was stopped, or at least moved behind very closed doors, after a massive public outcry about secret psychological manipulation. It proved that your emotions aren't actually yours. They're a virus you catch from your screen. You aren't having a bad day because of your life. You're having a bad day because an engineer in Menlo Park shifted a slider to see if they could make you sad for science. Number 13. The Blue Eyes, Brown Eyes Exercise The day after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, Jane Elliott decided to teach her third grade class in Iowa about racism by turning them against each other. She told the kids that people with blue eyes were superior, smarter, and cleaner than those with brown eyes. In a single afternoon, the blue-eyed children became arrogant, mean-spirited bullies, while the brown-eyed kids became timid and started failing their schoolwork. The next Monday, she flipped the roles, and the brown-eyed kids immediately started seeking revenge. This wasn't a formal scientific study, but the results were so disturbing that the school board was horrified. It proved that prejudice isn't a complex historical legacy. It's a plug-and-play instinct that eight-year-olds can master in under three hours. Number 12. The Landis Facial Expression Study In 1924, Carney Landis wanted to see if everyone makes the same face when they're disgusted. To get authentic reactions, he did things like making his students smell ammonia or put their hands into buckets of slimy frogs. But then, he went full supervillain. He handed his subjects a live white rat and a butcher knife and told them to decapitate it. Most people hesitated, cried, or protested, but one-third of them actually did it. When they refused, Landis would just do it himself in front of them. The study didn't actually find a universal disgust face, but it did find that people will commit casual animal sacrifice just because a guy in a lab coat asked politely. Landis stopped this line of research because he realized he wasn't studying expressions. He was studying how easy it is to turn a psych student into an executioner. Number 11. Universe 25. Imagine you're a mouse, and someone hands you the keys to a literal utopia. We're talking infinite snacks, zero predators, and enough housing to make a San Francisco tech bro weep. That was Universe 25, an experiment from the 1960s by John Calhoun designed to see what happens when life is too easy. For a while, the mice lived the dream eating, sleeping, and making more mice. But then, things got weird. Despite having plenty of space, the mice started huddling together in massive, neurotic clumps. A group emerged called the Beautiful Ones, who did nothing but eat, sleep, and groom their fur, refusing to socialize or mate. Meanwhile, the rest of the colony descended into a Darwinian nightmare of random violence and cannibalism. Eventually, the birth rate hit zero, and the entire population simply gave up on existing. Scientists stopped the study because the implications for human urbanization were so bleak, it basically suggested that if we ever solve all our problems, we'll just stop being human and groom ourselves into extinction. Your brain is literally hardwired to need a little bit of struggle. Otherwise, it just decides to factory reset into a pile of fluffy, narcissistic fur. Number 10. The Third Wave Usually, history teachers just tell you that dictators are bad and hope you don't start a riot in the cafeteria. But in 1967, Ron Jones decided that wasn't enough for his high school class. To explain how the German public could have possibly fallen for the Nazi regime, he started a movement called the Third Wave. He began with simple things like strength through discipline and strict posture. But by day four, the students had created their own secret salute, established a secret police to snitch on non-believers, and were actively banning outsiders from the classroom. The experiment was supposed to last weeks, but Jones had to pull the plug after five days because his students had become so terrifyingly efficient at being fascists that he lost control of the room. It turns out your brain is so desperate for a sense of belonging and order that it only takes about 120 hours for you to trade your personality for a uniform and a vendetta against the kid in the back row. Number 9. The Stanford Prison Experiment if you give a college student a whistle and a pair of mirrored sunglasses, there is a statistically significant chance they will turn into a tyrant. 
Philip Zimbardo's 1971 study took a group of normal young men and randomly assigned them to be either prisoners or guards in a fake basement jail. The experiment was scheduled for two weeks, but it was aborted after six days because the guards became sadistically abusive and the prisoners suffered actual emotional breakdowns. The truly disturbing part wasn't the cruelty, it was how quickly everyone, including the lead researcher, forgot it was all pretend. The study was buried by controversy for years because it suggested that good people don't really exist, there are just people in roles, and if you give a human the right costume and a bit of unchecked power, they'll treat their fellow man like a literal floor mat. Your moral compass isn't nearly as sturdy as you think. It's basically a weather vane that points toward evil the second the social climate changes. Number 8. The Aversion Project During the 70s and 80s, the South African military decided to treat human nature like a faulty plumbing system. In a horrifying attempt to cure homosexuality among conscripts, army psychiatrists, led by Dr. Aubrey Levin, used forced chemical castration and high-voltage electric shock therapy. They'd show soldiers photos of men and zap them until they lost consciousness, hoping to rewire their brains like a broken toaster. When that didn't work because, shocker, biology doesn't care about your bigotry, they escalated to forced gender reassignment surgeries, often leaving young men abandoned and mutilated. The study was eventually abandoned as the regime crumbled, mostly because the science was just state-sponsored torture disguised as psychology. It's a grim reminder that when authority figures decide a specific part of your identity is a bug in the software, they're willing to delete the entire hard drive to fix it. Number 7. The Milgram Experiment's Dark Cousin You've probably heard of the Milgram Experiment where people shocked strangers because a guy in a lab coat told them to, but the version they don't like to talk about involved a puppy. In 1972, researchers Sheridan and King worried that Milgram subjects only obeyed because they suspected the shocks were fake. To fix this, they used an actual, adorable puppy. The participants were told to give the dog increasingly painful shocks every time it failed a task. As the puppy howled and yelped in genuine pain, the participants wept, paced the room, and hyperventilated but 75% of them kept pulling the lever until they reached the maximum voltage. Scientists stopped this line of questioning because it proved something truly nauseating. Even when we know we are causing visible, audible agony to an innocent creature, most of us lack the no button required to stop a person in a uniform. Your conscience is apparently no match for a clipboard and a stern tone of voice. Number 6. The Robber's Cave Experiment If you want to turn a group of peaceful one two-year-olds into a bloodthirsty militia, all you need is a summer camp and a few manipulative psychologists. Muzaffar Sheriff took two groups of boys who didn't know each other, named them the Eagles and the Rattlers, and then let them bond separately before introducing them through a series of high-stakes competitions. Within days, the boys weren't just competing. They were burning each other's flags, ransacking cabins, and hoarding rocks to use as weapons. The researchers had to physically intervene to prevent a Lord of the Flies situation from becoming a literal headline. The study ended abruptly when they realized they had successfully manufactured a tribal war out of thin air. It turns out, us versus them isn't something we learn. It's a dormant predatory instinct that just needs a scoreboard and a different colored t-shirt to wake up and choose violence. Number 5. The Self-Deprivation Chamber In the 1950s, Donald Hebb wanted to see what happens when you turn off the world. He paid college students to sit in a small, cubicle-sized room with translucent goggles, heavy gloves, and a constant hum of white noise. No sights, no textures, no nothing. He planned to observe them for weeks but most of the brave volunteers didn't even last 48 hours. Without external input, their brains started eating themselves. The students began having vivid, terrifying hallucinations ranging from a parade of squirrels to giant ghosts and dots of light that turned into prehistoric animals. One participant even felt like a tiny pellet of buckshot was being fired at his arm. The study was halted because it became clear that the human mind isn't a standalone computer, it's a feedback loop. When you take away the world, your brain panics and starts hallucinating its own Netflix original series just to stay online. Basically, your consciousness is so afraid of a quiet room that it will invent a ghost just to have someone to talk to. Number 4. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study 
This wasn't just a discovery. It was a multi-decade betrayal that made the world of science look like a horror movie villain. Starting in 1932, the United States Public Health Service tracked 600 black men in Alabama to see the natural progression of untreated syphilis. The catch? The men were told they were being treated for bad blood, but they were actually given placebos like aspirin and mineral supplements. Even when penicillin became the standard cure in 1947, the researchers actively blocked the men from getting it. They wanted to watch the disease slowly rot the human body and mind from the inside out, just for the sake of the data. The study only stopped in 1972 because a whistleblower leaked it to the press, not because the scientists grew a conscience. It remains the ultimate black mark on medical history, proving that knowledge can sometimes be a mask for pure, unadulterated cruelty. Your trust in the experts is the only thing thinner than the paper they write their reports on. Number 3. The Learned Helplessness Dogs In 1967, Martin Seligman discovered a way to break a living being's spirit, and it wasn't pretty. He put dogs in crates where they received inescapable electric shocks. Later, he put those same dogs in a crate where they could easily escape the shock by jumping over a small barrier. But they didn't. They just lay down and whined, accepting the pain because they had learned that nothing they did mattered. Even when the door was wide open, they stayed in the electricity. Scientists found this so chilling because it perfectly mirrored human clinical depression. It proved that if life kicks you hard enough while you're down, your brain eventually gives up on the concept of exit doors entirely. You aren't lazy. Your nervous system has just been convinced that the floor is always going to be lava. Number 2. The David Reimer Case Psychologist John Money believed that gender was entirely a social construct. So when a surgical accident left an infant boy named David Reimer without a penis, Money convinced the parents to raise him as a girl. He used David as a lifelong case study to prove his theory, forcing him to act feminine and undergo treatments. It was a disaster. David knew from the start that something was wrong, suffered extreme depression, and eventually transitioned back to being male as an adult. The study ended in tragedy, proving that biology isn't just a suggestion you can override with a pink dress and some gaslighting. It turns out, you can't just software update a human being's identity without the entire system crashing. Number 1. The Little Albert Experiment Most babies are afraid of loud noises, but John Watson wanted to see if he could make a baby afraid of everything else. In 1920, he took an infant known as Little Albert and showed him a white rat. Albert liked the rat. Then, every time Albert touched the rat, Watson slammed a hammer against a steel bar behind the kid's head. Unsurprisingly, Albert started crying. But the disturbing part was the generalization. Albert didn't just become afraid of rats. He became terrified of rabbits, dogs, fur coats, and even a Santa Claus mask. Watson never unconditioned the kid, leaving him with a permanent, irrational fear of anything fluffy. The study was halted and widely condemned because it proved that your personality is basically a collection of scars, and a bored man with a hammer can rewrite your soul before you even learn to talk. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.